Okay, in this video I'm going to just define the central limit theorems. And there's not a whole lot going on here, I'm just given a definition. But this definition is so important that I want to repeat it from the text. So first we need to set up the central limit theorem. And let's see, to do that, I suppose that I have n random variables. And I'm going to put subscripts on these in a second. I'm in Microsoft Paint, so I'll use my, um, use my pen pad to do that. So I have x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way up to x sub n. And those are independent, identically distributed, random variables. Let's see, I want to extend this out here. With means, mu sub x, I'm going to leave myself some room to draw that in there. And standard deviations, I'm going to just abbreviate that by SD, and I'll say sigma sub x. Well, in that case, I will have a conclusion. So first let me fill in all those things that I need to do with my pen pad. So we have n random variables. Um, that'll be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, or excuse me, that should be x sub n, where n is some positive integer. Uh, the means are going to be mu sub x, and the standard deviations are going to be sigma sub x. Then what does the central limit theorem tell us? Well, it tells us two different things. First of all, if I take the sum of these n independent identically distributed random variables, so I have x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn, that itself is going to be a random variable. Um, it's like if we have n Bernoulli random variables, then the sum of those n Bernoulli random variables ends up being a binomial random variable. The Bernoulli random variable just tells you whether or not something happened, and then the binomial random variable counts how many times that something happened over n trials. So each little Bernoulli random variable is seen as a trial. Well, this is the same kind of thing, except for it isn't restricting to only Bernoulli random variables. It turns out it doesn't matter if your random variables are discrete or continuous, as long as they're independent and all have the same distribution. Then when you add them up, you will get, for large n, an approximate normal distribution. And that normal distribution will have mean n times the mean of the random variables, and standard deviation square root of n times the standard deviation of the random variables. Okay, now this is true only for large n. I'm going to put that down at the bottom here for large n. So this is the central limit theorem for a sum. Now we're not going to prove that in this class, but I am going to have a lab where you'll go through and add together um, some random variables and see that what you what what results really does look like a normal distribution. Now remember that the mean, this is linearity of the mean, uh, the mean or linearity of the expectation, the mean of a sum of random variables is the sum of the means. So since I have n random variables and I all have the same mean, I just multiply n times that mean. So I get n times mu sub x for the mean of this sum. And then for the standard deviation, the standard deviation is not the sum of the standard deviations of the individual random variables. Instead, we had a theorem that said that so long as the random variables are independent, which notice I'm assuming they are here, then the variance of the, random of the sum of the random variables is the sum of the individual variances. But since the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, we end up with the square root of n here. Okay, now, it turns out that these two are entirely different. Now we'll also have a central limit theorem for the average. And all the central limit theorem for the average is doing is dividing by n. Okay, it's taking this number and dividing by n. So that's going to be approximately normal. The mean is going to be mu sub x, right? Because I just take that mean, divide by n. And then what's the standard, devi standard deviation? Well, the standard deviation is going to be sigma sub x divided by the square root of n. Again, I'll just take the standard deviation and divide by n. And that's my central limit theorem for averages. OK, 
Okay, this is such a powerful result, and the reason it's so powerful is that it doesn't matter what these random variables are. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're exponential, if they're binomial, it doesn't matter um, if they're hypergeometric. Yes, there are more <laughs> there's more types of distributions out there than what we cover in this class. Hypergeometric. Uh, let's see. There's a, there's some kind of extended Poisson. Um, there's a chi-square distribution. There's several other that aren't coming to mind right now that we don't study. We try to just um, just get some of the basic ones, get a feel for what the distributions look like. But it doesn't matter what the distribution is. If you add independent, identically distributed random variables together, you get a normal random variable. Or if you average them together, you get a normal random variable. And this tells you what the means uh, and the standard deviations of those normal random variables are.